Grandpa Dennis is turning. I'm all right, cause I'm okay. Doesn't matter if my beard is gray. Just listen, I have something to say. I'm all right, cause I'm okay. And this old goat has something to say. So just keep learning. For Grandpa Dennis is turning. I'm Dennis Pervansky, and welcome to Grandpa Dennis's Wood Turning Studio. Today's video is all about hollowing. Hollowing out vases is a very difficult procedure. It's not all that popular, as those type of products don't really sell that well. However, a lot of wood turners from time to time want to do some hollowing. So this video is all about the tools and some of the techniques used in that process. There are three basic fundamental ways of hollowing. Number one is using hand chisels. Number two is using a capture system. And number three is an articulated arm hollowing tool. I'll try and go over all of those. The first one is hollowing out by hand. That's where you take a curved tool, similar to this. It's got a hook in it. And at the tip is a high speed steel or carbide cutter at the tip. It goes into a handle. Your Tool rest sits here and you go into the opening and you start hollowing out. There's a problem with this tool in that it could be quite dangerous. You can often get a catch inside the piece which will twist this and twist it in your hand. Sometimes the catch is so violent it can break your piece or it can twist your arm and cause some damage. I've tried this process when I first started turning and did not like it. Stuart came out with a tool called the Stuart Hollowing Tool. It looks like the modern slingshots with this part in here where you put your arm and a pistol grip to hang on to it. That bolt is undone and a shaft is put in here that's got a curved to it. This particular one has a straight piece with a carbide tip at the end. I use this for parting off pieces. It's a little bit better in that you've got support back in your forearm and your grip holds the piece, holds your tool in place quite a bit better. That still can be dangerous. Here's the tool used for the capture system. This is usually referred to as a D-handle because it's got a D shape to it. Now these tools that I'm gonna show from here on are all tools that I designed, had made for me or made myself. This is solid steel, three quarter inch bar, welded in the shape of a D and an inch and a quarter shaft or an inch and a quarter seamless tubing is welded onto one end of the D handle. I've drilled holes into that, tapped them and put set screws in. I also have made a number of three quarter inch steel rods that I've either got straight or I've heated them up and bent them to a curve. 
I have flattened out the tip of the tool, drilled and tapped a hole in here. That's where I screw in either a carbide cutter or a high speed steel cutter into there. This part gets put into the seamless tube. And when you get inch and a quarter seamless tube, a three quarter inch rod fits in just like a glove. And then these set screws are tightened up and that holds this bar in place. If you're a little bit handy, if you've got, if you're a welder or have a friend who's a welder, this is quite easy to make. These items, the three quarter inch uh, steel rods, <coughs> the uh, seamless tubing, it's all available quite readily. Shortly, I'll show you the actual capture system that keeps this in place and keeps it from twisting. One of the problems in hollowing has always been, how do I know how deep I can go in the hollowing process? If I hollow too much, I could go right through the wall of my piece. How do I know when I'm getting close? Well, a lot of people have come up with systems using laser pointers. And this is one of my answers to how to keep the laser pointer on track. It's an inch and a quarter square pipe, and I've welded a plate onto this end and a plate onto the top. I took a piece of two by two oak and I've drilled a hole right through the middle of it that's the same diameter as the seamless tubing. That's an inch and a quarter. At this end, I've put in a T-nut and here's the quarter inch bolt that goes through. Spread this apart. Spread it apart and I slip it onto the onto the, the seamless tubing. Because I took that two by two of oak and cut it down the middle, ripped it. There's a kerf there, so it doesn't completely close in on the seamless tube. But when I can now tighten this down so that it's very secure. The next move is to take my square pipe with a level, put it on, and make sure that the pipe is absolutely perpendicular to the base of the D-handle. If it's not, I loosen the bolt and twist this until I get it. And tighten it back up. Next is to put a cutter into the handle. And tighten it down with the set screws. This apparatus is the laser pointer system 
from One Way Tools. <clears throat> They're an Ontario, Canada company that ship all over the place. They've got a website, onewaytools.ca. Now on the top of the square tubing, I have welded on a plate. I've drilled and tapped it and put a second plate <coughs> on top of that. The quarter inch screws are here to tighten the top plate onto the bottom one. I take the laser pointer device, slip it between plates and tighten down the quarter inch screws to hold the laser pointer in place. The shaft of this laser pointer is parallel to the cutting tool. Now, if I loosen these bolts up, I can move my laser pointer forward and back. And the idea here is to, when you turn on your laser pointer light, that light is to shine down exactly on the tip of the cutting tool. So I can adjust by Loosening up these bolts, I can move this in and out and sideways. In addition, there's a joint here that can be loosened and this can be moved. In addition to that, the whole laser pointer can rotate. The idea here is the pointer to, is to come down right on the tip of your cutting tool and then make these adjustments up here so that the light shines whatever thickness you want the wall of your piece that's where you put your laser pointer if it's a half inch a quarter inch an eighth or an inch so that pointer would be as an example half an inch off the tip of the cutting tool when this whole apparatus is on the lathe, everything is all secured. You put it on the lathe and you start cutting the inside of your, hollowing the inside of your piece. That laser light will shine on the surface of the piece. As you get closer to the wall thickness that you have determined, that laser light starts elongating and eventually drops off the piece and you don't see it anymore. That's when you know your wall thickness is whatever distance you had set originally. That's an invaluable piece for making sure you don't go through the wall of your wood turning. Not that I've done that more than three or four times but this really helps. This rotation here on the top allows you to go around your cutting tool, around the tip, the cutting tip, as you rotate it. So you keep the same distance. With this process, because it's only three quarters of an inch steel rod, there could be some vibration if you've got your tool overhanging your tool wrist significantly. As a result, I had this one made. This is made out of inch and a quarter seamless tubing cut and welded into a D. I had a machinist ream out this part of the seamless tubing so that it would fit a one inch bar. 
Again, I drilled the holes and tapped them for set screws to hold the one inch bar in place. At the end of the one inch bar, I took an angle grinder and flattened out the end and drilled and tapped a hole. I then took a piece of steel, shaped it like so, drilled a hole in there, so that hole will now fit onto the end of the bar. At this end, I drilled and tapped another hole to accommodate the cutting tip. This is high speed steel. This is quite readily available. Machine shops use them all the time. I had a machine shop make these circles. They drilled a hole in the center and they cut a slot in here. That slot is not as deep as the cutting tip. The cutting tip fits inside neatly. But it's proud of the circle. A bolt and washer go through the hole and tighten onto that piece. When the bolt gets tightened down, it forces the washer against that cutting tip and that holds it in place, and I can move the cutting tip in and out Boy, that's on there solid. I can extend the cutting tip as far out as I need. That goes right through. Then it tightens on as I screw it into the threaded hole. Now this cutting tip can be moved in and out and angled whichever way I want it. And at this end of the bar, I can rotate this whichever way I want. So that gives flexibility to this straight one inch bar. Now this took me all day to do the grinding and the flattening and making sure that this piece was absolutely parallel to the shaft. And that becomes the cutting tip on a one inch shaft. This process is also available from one way. It's in the hundred dollar plus range and I saved a few bucks by making it myself with just an angle grinder. Now you don't need this complicated process. 
you could just put a carbide cutting tip right on to here. This may have to get shaped a little bit tighter to the hole, depending on the cutting tip you're using. Here's a tear shaped, an old tear shaped cutting tip that I've had in the shop for quite some time. I think the new ones have a hole right in the center instead of cut out like that. That could fit right on there, and there's your carbide cutting tip. And a bolt will hold that securely in place. And again, this can be moved to different angles. This being carbide is going to last a lot longer. Hunter Tools also makes this system with a carbide cutter on the tip. It's relatively expensive, but it lasts quite a while and the tip is replaceable. So if I'm going to be overhanging the tool more than six inches off the tool rest, I'm going to be putting on my inch and a quarter D-bar with the one inch cutting rod on it. So let me show you the apparatus to hold these things in place. As you remember, the whole point of having the D-handle and a capture system is to keep the tool from grabbing and twisting. The tool is going to catch probably most likely, well, it does for me. So, rather than have my arm holding it from catching, this D-handle, when it's captured between two plates, has nowhere for it to go. It can't twist. That means the tip cannot twist. So it's held in place. So, let me show you that. I realize that that's a lot of fabricating, and if you're not good at that or have welders to do that, it becomes a real problem. However, there are many companies that do sell these capture systems. I know that One Way has a complete system as well, including the capture part, the D-handle, and the cutters, the tips, everything, and various sizes from 3 8 all the way to the one inch bar. It is rather pricey, but if you're gonna be doing a lot of hollowing, that might be the good option for you. Now the question is, why did I go to the inch and a quarter seamless pipe to make the handle, the D handle? It is significantly heavier. It's difficult to get around because of its weight. However, my thinking is that the mass of that D-handle will cut down on vibration simply through weight and mass. This is the capture part of the hollowing system. I've got a second banjo that's clamped onto my bench here just so that I could show you how this thing is. Basically, I took a piece of angle iron. I found a roller from a surplus store. I think this was off some kind of conveyor belt system. And I welded on a plate on each side, put the roller in between so it's captured properly. And then this is uh, just a straight bar with bolts at each end. And I loosen these bolts off, lift the bar up, and put the hollowing, the D-handle in there. The D-handle fits in there nicely. 
And when I loosen these bolts at the end, I can push this down so that there's very little movement in here. But the roller allows for really smooth, easy rolling. This is where the my shaft comes in, either three quarter inch or the one inch shaft with at the very end is the cutter. So this will move like so with my tool rest up here holding the three quarter inch to the or the one inch shaft. And this then can be moved around at different angles. Plus I can take the plus I can take my banjo and move it over as far as I can this way and the whole apparatus would go so I'll have more ability to get in at a more acute angle into the shoulder of a large bowl. So this is basically the system and it's homemade. Again, one way sells this apparatus and it's fairly pricey, but it's doable. I can raise or lower the entire capture system by unlocking the one inch shaft that goes into the banjo. And it's important to have that ability to raise and lower it because once I put in the D-handle, whether it's the large one or the small one, I need this D-handle to be completely parallel to the bed of the lathe. On this side will be the tool rest that it'll go up and down as well to give me the exact height from the bed of the lathe to the tip of the cutting tool. That has to be right on the center of the headstock. I will be covering the articulated arm system for hollowing on a video that's coming up very shortly. This one is going to be long enough just covering the capture system. I'm certainly not an expert in geometry. This is a process that's important to know with regards to the wall thickness and where the laser pointer is. If this is the shaft of your tool and there's the cutting tip, your laser pointer may be set up to be here. So when the light shines and misses the piece completely, that means you're at your, your cutting depth. That laser has to be at a right angle to the wall. Down at this level, if you had the pointer at the same location without moving it, you would be out here when you're trying to cut here. And your depth is going to be off. So when you get close to this end of the, of the piece, you have to adjust your light so that it's at a right angle to the wall. There's the wall, that's the right angle. You can see how it's a different, a different angle. So as you're moving along the wall, you have to be adjusting your laser pointer all the time. That's where that circular adjustment at the head of the one-way tool system comes in because it can rotate and move your laser pointer so that it's always at the right angle to the wall. This is important information when you're using the laser pointer for determining the wall thickness. This is your cutting tip, and here's where the laser pointer situates. So it's just on the very edge of the bowl a little bit deeper in here and that's gone and you won't see it on the bowl it'll be on the floor if you move your cutting tool to this position the curve of your 
bowl is different. Here's the cutting tip and it's right on the existing edge, but look where the laser pointer is. You haven't moved the laser pointer. This distance in here, if you could see that, that distance hasn't changed. The distance from the tip to the laser and if you don't change it, that's where it ends up on that dotted line. So as a result, if you had this pointer right on the edge in here, this tip would have been further into the bowl wall. That dotted line is where the cutting tip would have ended up. So this wall thickness from here to here is different than that wall thickness. That's a result of not moving your laser pointer to be at a right angle to your wall. This is gonna be my attempt at trying to explain this part of the one-way laser system. It's got a swivel head in here. And since the laser is installed off center, as I rotate it, you'll see the laser moving. It moves further away and closer to the, the cutting tip. Now up here is a pointer right there. That's the pointer. So this is going to be lined up like so, which when you follow down that's the right angle to the side of the bowl. This is the outside of the bowl, that's the inside, and that's the cutting tip. Well, here's another complication to the whole process. This is the shaft you're using, and here's your cutting tip. You have your laser pointer, and this distance is what you've calculated the depth of your wall. As long as you're using the one-way system with that circular concept on the top, and you don't change this angle, that circular system can take your laser pointer and move it all around the tip of that tool. Now, if you move your cutting tip to this direction, you have to readjust your laser pointer to maintain your half inch or whatever the wall thickness was. Now, again, you can use the circular part of the one-way system and it will take that pointer and it would rotate it around this configuration. If you moved your cutting tip to that direction, you again have to readjust your laser so that you've got your half inch out here. And again, as you're moving that configuration through the depth of the bowl, you can readjust the pointer like so, using the circular part that's on the top. But each time you change these angles, you have to manually readjust the pointer. Keep that angle of your cutting tool 
or that configuration of the cutting tool. And as you sweep it through, you can use the circular piece of the one-way system to make those minor adjustments so that you can maintain the wall thickness. A famous wood turner named Lyle Jameson came up with this template to help determine where to put the laser pointer. You take this solid line, and that's a right angle down here. Take that solid line and put it flat onto whatever part of the bowl you want to turn. And let's say it's this part. Keep it basically in here. Bring it down to your cutting tip, and that's where your cutting tip will be inside. Then set your laser pointer on that line for whatever depth you want. Now, when it comes time to turning this part of the bowl, the shape is different, and the angle is different. So here's the angle of this part. It's down there. So you take that, Try and keep it at that same area. There's your cutting tip. Now set your laser pointer again to whatever depth you want. Simple as that. That's it. Here's the capture system set up on my lathe. This part is attached to a banjo. I've got the one inch rod inside. And I've got the cutter. I've got the cutter installed with Hunter Tools cutting tip. I've got this tool rest set so that that cutting tip is exactly 13 inches, which is the center of this piece, which is the absolute center of my headstock. That's 13 inches from the bed to the tip of the tool. This is a 26 inch swing on this lathe. Now, it runs nice and smooth. This roller bearing takes the weight of the tool and this rod does the capturing, sits down on it. Well, let's see how it works. You'll note I don't have my laser pointer set up. There's no need for it till I get a little bit closer to the edge of the wall. And it's all set up and ready to go. If there was anything in this video that I didn't make very clear, leave a comment and a question and I'll reply. Also a reminder to subscribe and hit the like button. It'll help me in my analytics for this particular project of mine. The hollow form I'm making in this project is actually one of two cremation urns that I am doing. They're for a married couple. If you're interested in seeing the entire video on how they're made, I'll be posting that in the next few weeks. Moving the cutting tip in and out of the bowl is rather effortless because of the way my system is set up. But I'm also having to adjust the cutter head frequently and therefore adjust the laser pointer as well. 
I'm also blowing out the shavings quite frequently and they do pile up significantly. One thing of note, when you're down here, like so, you don't want to get a finger caught in here or inside there. Uh, that's not going to be very good for you. Not that I've ever done that, that many times, but you want to be cautious and careful. Generally, the rule of thumb is you hollow out the front part as best you can and work your way to the back. The reason for that is you want more mass to remain on the back and give you a more solid vibration free turning. Once you get this front part hollowed out, that's it. You leave it alone and you keep working back. The other thing is you want to hollow out around the middle here enough room for more shavings. That means you'd have less stopping and cleaning. My next video will be a short one on how I made the steady rest and why I made it that way. I'm also going to do a third video on the articulated arm for the hollowing process. That's another tool that I designed and had made for me. Well, I finally got the laser pointer set up that it's almost on top of the cutter. It's uh, a little finicky, but once you've got it set up, it should be okay. I don't need it to be accurate in terms of the depth, uh, thickness of the wall right now, because I am basically just trying to get an idea of where we are relative to the piece. The laser pointer is right there. So I've still got a fair amount of about three, two inches or so of thickness to go. So let's get at it. I hope you got some good information from this video. I'd like to hear what you've got to say. If there are parts that were too confusing for you, make a comment and I'll get back to you. I'll reply. If there was something else you wanted to learn from it, make another comment and I'll reply to that. It would help me greatly if you could hit the like button and subscribe. When you subscribe, hit the bell and that'll ensure that you get my next videos. The second part is going to be on the steady rest, how it's made and why it's made that way. The third part is going to be the articulated arm that I use for hollowing as well. That's another thing that I had made specially for hollowing. Please share this video with others who may be interested in this type of thing. Till the next time, keep turning. Grandpa Dennis is turning. I'm all right, cause I'm okay. Doesn't matter if my beard is gray. Just listen, I have something to say. I'm all right, cause I'm okay. And this old goat has something to say. So just keep learning, for Grandpa Dennis is turning.